One problem with the adding and editing of countries so far is that it will be possible to end up with the same country twice. In practice, we want to prevent this. There's probably more than one way to solve this problem, but we'll be taking the route of trying to solve it at the SQL end of things. So what we'll do is create two new stored procedures one for insert and one for update. And those stored procedures will do the check to ensure that we aren't adding the same country twice. We'll then need to make some changes to the C sharp code. To enhance this a little bit further, we'll also need to warn the user uh, that a duplicate is about to be added and the code has uh, intercepted and prevented that, that happening. Anyway, now let's have a look at the code. To illustrate the problem, um, I've started the application and we'll now add another country. And I'll add France. And as we can see, we've now got two records for, for France. So I'll stop this and go back to the code. I've already started uh, SQL Server, and what we're going to do is add a new uh, countries insert uh, stored procedure, um, and we'll give it a different name, and we'll then swap out the existing uh, countries insert for the for the new one. I've already got some code uh, I've prepared, so we select new query and I'll paste in the code. And what this is doing, um, it's, this is the, uh, the code to create the procedure. We'll call it spcountries underscore insert with duplicate checking. And it's declaring a variable country name. And we're also declaring another variable called result value. And we're setting that to an integer. And the stored procedure starts by checking to see uh, if the if there's a country name already in the database with the parameter that we're passing in. And if it finds a country name already exists, it sets the result value to 99. If it doesn't find a country with the same name, it then inserts, inserts, inserts it into the table and sets the results to this value, which is at at error, which on success will be zero. So then down here, it says if the result is not equal to zero, it'll roll back the transaction. Otherwise, it'll commit the transaction and then return the result value back to the C sharp code. So I will now run that. And if I, I don't need that any longer. I'll refresh this and you'll see here that we've got a new stored procedure insert with duplicate checking. To show how these return values work, we can actually run the stored procedures from within SQL Management Server. So if I uh, select the insert with duplicate checking, right click, we can execute the stored procedure. So first of all, I'll put in an, a country that we haven't got in the database, such as Portugal. And run it. And you'll see that we've got a return value of zero and that Portugal was entered into the database. If we rerun it again, this time we'll enter France. we've got a value of 99 and France wasn't added to the database. And it's those return values that we'll be using in the C-sharp code. And I'll start off with the country service. And in the country service, I'm looking for the insert. And 
and we'll create a new one um, that says countries insert with duplicate checking. And in the, the stored procedure that we want is now SP countries insert with duplicate checking. And in the I country service, we want to change that. So that's insert with duplicate checking. And in the countries add edit razor, we want to change that down here as well. checking. Right, so let's run that and make sure that we can't add any duplicates. If I select add France, save. Well, it hasn't added it. Uh, but it wasn't particularly user friendly. It just didn't add it. Um, it would be much better if we gave the user a warning saying, sorry, you can't do that. Uh, so we'll have a look at that next. Returning to the code, uh, we're going to have a look at the country service. And in here, the procedure countries insert with duplicate checking. This is the one we've simply change the name of. Uh, so we're calling this this new uh, stored procedure. Uh, that's always returning true and it's not taking into account uh, the fact that we've got a return value from from SQL. So I'm going to swap out what we've got here uh, with some other code and I'll explain what we're doing here. So this is declaring an integer called success and I'm setting it to zero. I'm then declaring some parameters. So we've got the country name, which we're going to be passing to the stored procedure, but I've also added return value, um, which is the, the parameter direction, as you can see, is return value. And that means the, 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 the value of either 99 or zero uh, that is being uh, sent back from the SQL uh, to say whether the insert has taken place or not. So now we're getting uh, the return value, we can do something with it. Now notice as well that the this was a Boolean, it's now been changed to, to an integer. Um, so we also need to change country's service to reflect this. And whereas we had uh, a Boolean there before, and we were passing uh, the, whole uh, the whole country's object. Uh, we're now just po posting a, a string for the country's name. Uh, so let me just change that. And again, to save you watching me type very slowly, I've got it ready for copying and pasting. So that's changed the uh, country's service. The next thing we want to do is go, go back to the country's add edit razor. And what we're going to do here is add in a sync fusion, uh, another sync fusion dialog that's going to pop up with a warning uh, if, if an error is discovered. So let me again copy that code. So that goes at the top. Of, of the code here uh, in the HTML section. And we've defined the dialog, we've given it a reference, it's modal and it's going to be visible false. It's got a heading that says warning and the content says this country already exists, it won't be added again. 
and we've got a close button that'll call uh, the close dialog event. Th one of the neat things about this is that um, we've already got a, a, a dialog for doing the, the adding of the country. Uh, and this dialog is going to be called from within that. So if effectively, we're, we're nesting, nesting dialogues, which is rather neat. Right, we need to uh, declare this, this new dialog. Uh, so again, I've got this code ready. So I'll just, I'll paste it in here. So that declares it. And further down, we want to change the save. So what we're saying here is if country equals zero, which is the add, we do this. Otherwise, if it's an update, we do that. I want to replace this section in here with some code. Um, so let me get that from Notepad. I also want to move that up here for the moment. We'll move it again later, uh, but I don't want it directing us there twice. So if we're adding, if the integer, the success, well, we're declaring the integer success and we're setting it to the return value uh, of the SQL proceed, stored procedure. And if it doesn't equal zero, i.e. is 99, it means the country name already exists and we're going to open the dialog that's going to say, here's a warning that we've added it already. So now we need to add the, the last bit of this particular jigsaw, which is the open and close of the dialog. So I've got that prepared. Add that in here, and so if a country exists, it calls this open dialog function. The open dialog will open the the warning uh, dialog warning, and similarly the close one will close it and then return to the navigation manager. Fine. Okay, let's give that a go and see what happens. Right, well, I'll try adding France again. Lo and behold, we get a warning to say this country already exists and it won't be added again. So notice how this particular modal is still overlaying the existing modal window. And so very neat. OK, that's it. We're now going to have to have a look at the uh, code for updating a country. This is going to be very similar. Uh, so we'll add a stored procedure uh, and then swap out the old stored procedure for the for the new one. Um, so let's make a make a start on that. So I'm going to just stop the uh, the, the, the application and go to SQL and now we'll select new query to add the new stored procedure. This is marginally different from the uh, one for adding because what we're doing here, we're passing in the country ID of the country we're going to update as well as the name. So what we're checking for here is where the country name exists with the country name parameter being passed in and the country ID is not the same as the country ID that we're passing in. This is so that uh, should the user by any chance uh, try and save, a, select uh, to edit a country, doesn't make a change and then saves it, uh, it won't throw up an error to say that the country already exists. 
and then the rest of the the rest of the code in here is as before so let's execute that and we won't bother saving the query and now if we go back to the code uh, we've got country service to consider and it was going to be countries update I've got the replacement code for that already so let me just find that and paste it in So this follows exactly the same pattern as before. So we're setting a, an integer and returning that integer back to the, the calling procedure. The uh, iCountry service also needs changing. So firstly, the name and second, the fact that we're changing it from the Boolean to an integer. And on the countries add edit, we want to change the, the save here. We've already got the warning, so we won't need to worry about that. So that looks right. So let's run that. Uh, select one, let's choose edit. And I'm going to try changing that to Finland, for example. It doesn't allow me to do it. If I try to do it, to edit it and save it, We shouldn't have got that message. <laughs> What's happened there? Of course, uh, France already exists, but with a different ID. So if I se select that one and choose to delete it, it's now gone. If I now choose France and try and edit that, it should allow me to click save because it's got the same ID. That's fine. Everything's working. That's a relief. <laughs> right, on to the next task.